LDL cholesterol is not bad. Now I'm prepared to get totally flamed and totally destroyed on this video. And that's absolutely fine. But that's why I'm going to start this video off with an awesome reference, an awesome study from the British Medical Journal that is literally brand spanking new. And what this study from the British Medical Journal looked at was over 68,000 participants from over 19 studies. And what they were trying to identify was if there truly was a correlation between LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular related death. Well, what they found was pretty insane. 80% of the people that died did not have a correlation with LDL cholesterol at all. In fact, it was quite the opposite. What they found is that those that had lower levels of LDL cholesterol and lower levels of VLDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterols, had a higher instances of death related to cardiovascular issues. That's point blank right there, cut and dry. So let's get right into the science and how this works. I'm gonna break this video down as simply as I possibly can because I feel that everyone deserves the right to know how cholesterol really works in the body and how it's really not that bad. We just have to understand what's happening. So it starts with what is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a fatty substance that really helps us build almost everything in our body. It helps us build nerves, it helps us build cells, it helps us create hormones. It's absolutely critical. It's so critical that the body has to create it itself in some cases. Now, something the body has to create itself can't really be all that bad. But we have to break down a little bit more of what a good cholesterol and what a bad cholesterol really is. Well, let me answer that for you. There's no such thing. There really is not a good or a bad cholesterol. Or neither, because LDL, which is known as the bad cholesterol, is really a lipoprotein. And HDL, which is known as the good cholesterol, is also a lipoprotein, not a cholesterol. And what a lipoprotein is, is really just a carrier of cholesterol. You see, think of it like a private chauffeur for cholesterol. Cholesterol is not water soluble. So what that means is it cannot just flow on through the bloodstream willy nilly going to where it needs to go. It needs specific chauffeurs and specific drivers. So we need those lipoproteins to carry cholesterols. So LDL, HDL, IDL, VLDL, and even some other ones like cliomicrons are technically the vehicles that drive the cholesterol not the cholesterol itself. Think of them like specific kind of Ubers, buses, trains, different transportation vehicles for different needs. And that's really how the process starts. So let's break down what happens from the time you consume a lipid all the way down to what LDL and what VLDL and what HDL are truly doing in your body. When you eat lipids, your body starts to digest them, okay? And it goes through the enterocytes, which is basically the cell in your intestinal tract that allows the absorption. From there, it piles onto what's known as a cliomicron. Cliomicron is one of those lipoproteins I just talked about, and it delivers it to specific places. Well, the main job of the cliomicron is to deliver something known as TAG, but you may commonly know it as a triglyceride. It's something that your doctor is telling you to reduce too. And quite honestly, that's probably the one thing that they're correct about. Triglycerides are seemingly very, very bad. So the cliomicron delivers a little bit of the triglycerides, very, very energy rich form of fuel. Triglyceride jumps off and is used for fuel when need be. Any excess triglycerides ultimately get converted into fatty acids that either get used for energy or stored as adipose tissue. So triglycerides are sort of a precursor to building up that belly fat that we don't really want. Okay, then we have VLDL, which is produced by the liver and also produced by cliomicrons. VLDLs carry some of the cholesterols, but not as much as the cliomicrons do right out the gate. But the same general premise, delivering the fresh new cholesterol to where it needs to go. I'll come back to LDL in just a second because I'm gonna jump over to HDL for a second. But the first thing I really want you to know about this is LDLs deliver new cholesterols and HDLs deliver recycled cholesterols. Here's how it works. So the liver produces HDL, the good cholesterol. And what this good cholesterol does is it leaves the liver totally empty. Think of it like an empty bus, just the shell of a bus with no people on it. It drives to the cell and the cell says, hey, I have excess cholesterol that I either didn't use or I have already used and it's ready to be recycled. It hops on the HDL and the HDL drives back to the liver and it ends up doing its job. It ends up converting it back into a usable form of cholesterol or ends up excreting it by combining with bile. So that's where HDL comes in as the good cholesterol, right? Seems like a hero. It goes through, it picks up all the spare cholesterols and it delivers them to where they need to go and you're never adding new cholesterol, you're just recycling more of a good thing, right? So then LDLs are the ones that actually carry the cholesterols to the cell to be utilized. Here's where it all gets really tricky and here's where I'm gonna to try to summarize it as simply as possible. LDLs deliver the cholesterol to the cell, the new cholesterol to the cell. 
the cell has a receptor specifically for LDLs. So remember, LDLs aren't bad, so much so that even our cells have receptors for it. The LDL hits the receptor, and through something known as receptor cell-mediated endocytosis, it receives the cholesterol and transfers it into the cell. Then, the receptor cell drops off the cholesterol and comes back to the surface of the cell, and therefore is readily available again for new cholesterol to be received. I'm going to make this abundantly clear. It is the sole responsibility of the LDL receptor to regulate the levels of LDL cholesterol in the blood. It's up to the cell to dictate how much is absorbed and how much stays in the blood. So here's what ends up happening, and this is where the medical community has made their hypothesis. They're overall literally known as the cholesterol hypothesis. We have receptor cell-mediated endocytosis actions happening in the blood vessels too. So when we have excess LDL floating through the bloodstream, it's going to bind to those receptor cells in our bloodstream, creating sort of an LDL blockage. But that's not the problem. What ends up happening is this is somewhat abnormal. So our bodies trigger an immune response. They send macrophages. They send the immune system to attack that. What does our immune system always do when we bump our knee, we bump our elbow? Inflammation causes swelling. Well, guess what? This swelling is happening surrounding the LDL buildup that happened in the artery. That causes the inflammation, which causes atherosclerosis. And there are so many doctors that have tried speaking from the mountaintops to talk about this, that truly atherosclerosis is related to inflammation, not necessarily cholesterol. We have to link back to the fact that it's the triglycerides that lead to the fat accumulation, not the cholesterol, and it ends up being the LDL communication in the immune system that leads to that atherosclerosis. Now, honestly, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you to go on Lipitor. I can't tell you to go on blood pressure medication. I can't tell you to even really eat a low cholesterol or a high cholesterol diet. But I can be a purveyor of good things and a purveyor of good information and really sift through the studies that really prove that LDL has such a bad rap and it's really not that bad after all. So at the end of the day, remember, LDL delivers new cholesterol. New cholesterol equals new life. New hormones, new cells, new nerves. HDL is good too. It recycles more of a good thing. But they're both good. Don't demonize one or the other. They're both an integral part of our life. And they've been here through evolution. They've been here through so many different things for us for decades, for centuries, for hundreds of thousands of years. And it's how our bodies work. It's up to us to live a stress-free lifestyle and an anti-inflammatory lifestyle so that we don't trigger the inflammation from an already existing positive thing in our bodies. As always, make sure you keep it locked in on my channel. And if you have any questions or you just want to flame me and get totally upset with me for doing this video, have at it. Comment away. I will see you in the next video.